So firstly, uh, yeah, my name's Josh, I'm the lead engineer at, Tra uh, lead engineer at Travel X, um, and I had to do the kind of plug beforehand. We've got jobs open, so apply if you guys are interested in what we're talking about. Um, so basically, my talk's going to be on API specifications, um, and specifically uh, GraphQL and comparing it to REST, but specifically REST, uh, JSON API, which is an uh, implementation of REST, or specification of a REST um, API. Um, so first of all, who, who knows uh, JSON API? Few people who knows GraphQL and has used GraphQL. What most people who's shitting themselves because they've never spoken in front of this many people. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's just me. Um, so the, the, the overview I'll be doing is um, I'll quickly go through JSON API description. Um, I'll then go through what it looks like in Java. Um, go through a GraphQL description, then GraphQL in Java, and then basically do a slight comparison of, of the two. So, first one, JSON API specific definition. Um, on JSON API website, they've got, um, this is their definition. It's very long-winded. Um, it's basically just a nice way of saying it's a, it's a nice specification to a REST API design. Um, and, and that's basically what it is. So, I'm, I'm gonna, hopefully, feel free to ask me any questions. I'm gonna go through um, in, on Postman, um, and feel free to ask any questions if it's confusing. Um, because I'm not really expecting you guys to know anything really before about JSON API um, or GraphQL, so feel free to ask questions during it. So, um, first of all, this is um, creating a beer, this is how you create a beer resource with JSON API. So, um, it's a post, um, you've got these, these three kind of main parts of a request. You've got data, which is the data of the request. You've got the type, which is the type of the resource that you're creating, which is also obviously in the URL. And then you've got attributes, which are the attributes of the resource you're trying to create. This is what, shit. Um, <laughs> this, is, um, this is the response. Um, obviously, it's server-side generates an ID, um, comes back with the attributes that you've requested. Um, so this is uh, an example of creating a, so say you've got a beer, and you want to link it to a brewery that has made that beer. Um, what you do is you use these things called relationships, and this is basically saying, I'm creating a beer um, called API, API, IPA, um, IPA um, as a style, and it's related to brewery 12345, which already exists on, uh, in the system. The response comes back with basically the links to that brewery that it's already linked, and also the generated ID uh, on there. So, um, I'll quickly do um, a demo on some of the other um, JSON API examples. You guys can see that. So, if you want to create a brewery, um, same thing. Um, comes back ID, uh, all the links, a relationship to the beers. If you want to create a beer on a brewery, um, you've got it's, it's an alternative to the way I did the relationships before. So, instead of it being um, an already existing uh, brewery and you want to link it, this is basically saying to brewery one, I want to create a beer resource, and the body is just the resource, the beer resource. So, um, if you want to fetch beers, obviously it's a get, so there's no uh, request body. Comes back with all the beers. Beer two, uh, beer two, all of them basically have listed it. Um, uh, get beer with filter. So, JSON API has. Um, uh, filtering as by default you should be able to filter on all, all uh, parameters. So in this situation, I'm basically saying give me all the beers with the style of IPA, um, and that'll come back with only beers with the IPA. Um, with you can you can also uh, do like greater than, less than, like. You can have basically these different ways of filtering. Regex? I'm not sure. I mean, you can implement that as well. Um, it, it's not really closed down. Like that, but it's, um, so if you wanted to, this is an example of including a relationship or the resource that's related to this beer. Um, in this situation, you're saying, give me beer two and include the brewery on this uh, response. And that comes back with beer two, all the details of that beer, and then underneath it has the included resource, the brewery that it's related to, and all the attributes that are included on that one. Okay, the next one. Is there any, any questions so far that will make sense? Cool. Um, so the next one is via page. So JSON API has paging. Um, in this situation, you're basically saying, I want um, a limit of one per page, and give me the first page, basically. Comes back with the first, first in the list. And that's kind of 
a very, very quick overview of JSON API and some of the use cases and different ways you can use it. Okay. Um, so, what does uh, JSON API look like in Java? So, there's a few options. You've got, you can basically do it yourself, do it all yourself from you know controllers and then you know having all these objects like the, the data, the attributes, and all that kind of thing. But it's very heavyweight. And if you want to implement everything, which means I want to be able to query by every attribute, I want to be able to uh, patch uh, every resource, I want to be able to post every resource, it's very heavyweight. But there are a few libraries if you do really want to, um, which is JSON API Converter. Query DSL can be used to basically help um, uh, with the querying of data. Um, and Spring Hey Kiosk if you want to use that for link generation. Um, but the best thing to do, uh, well, the ideal thing to do if you're lazy, is um, using Crump, uh, using, definitely not using Crump, but um, uh, using a framework. Um, and there's a few frameworks, I'm sure if people yell out if you've got any ideas of other frameworks that we've got that, that there are out there, but <coughs> the two main ones that um, I know about is Crump, which is a Catharsis successor, which is basically the same thing, but just it was forked and then enhanced. Um, and I'm going to do a demo of this one. And the other one's a lead. I think that's how you pronounce it, but uh, yeah, that's another one. So first of all, the, all the all the JSON API examples that I just went through um, in Postman, uh, those were using this uh, this demo that I've set up. So um, first of all, obviously you need the comp dependencies. Um, the second thing is just a simple Spring Boot app. Um, and the next thing, which is basically the only thing you have to do if you want a very very simple um, application that doesn't really have any business logic logic in it. Um, is annotate a resource that you want to have all these endpoints existing for. So if you want to be able to have a patch, put, delete, get, search all these things, all you need to do is annotate the resource um, with, with this. And you're basically saying the resource name is beers, um, and everything works. Obviously, if you have data been set up, you get to do that stuff, but that's simple. Um, and then also, um, with the ID, you, that's just saying that that's the ID type for this resource. Same thing for brewery. Um, uh, and then, like I said, all these things I went through, that's all I've had to do. I've had, got an in-memory database, but that's all you've got to do. Um, if you want to add business logic, which obviously we'll, we all do want to do that, there's a few options. Um, one option is you make a filter. Not the nicest thing, um, but you basically can say if it's a patch, if it's a post, if it's a whatever, you can do some specific business logic and what that resource is as well. Um, and then another option is a servlet, which kind of already has done like the difference between the post and whatever. So that's Crump. Um, it is good if you're wanting to basically very quickly implement some things, but you do get put into a bit of a corner when when you when you um when you use it. In anger, basically. Um, yeah, and in anger. Um, so yeah, that's Crump. Um, so now I'm going to quickly go through uh, GraphQL. Any questions, by the way? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can make it. You can have two separate things. There's a, it's not the prettiest way of doing it. You basically have a translator that it, it basically gets injected and, and does the translation. So you can definitely differentiate. But do you need JPA to be able to map it? You need what, sorry? JPA. JPA. Uh, JPA to do the yeah. yeah. This unit. Yes. Yeah. Would you describe the production environment if you want to generate so much code for you? Yeah, I would. <laughs> He, w he used to work here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, can you apply can you apply these annotations to legacy classes in naive? Because it makes sense now. Uh, what what do you mean, sir? Just makes sense now. Uh, I'm not sure. Right. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so anyway, uh, GraphQL quickly on the so firstly, forget forget REST. Forget everything you know about REST. Um, GraphQL it's a, it's an API specification and a query language. But don't don't think going into this. This is how REST is because it, it, this makes things harder. Um, maybe think of it more as something along the lines of SQL, and then it'll make it a little easier to understand. So, like I said, it's a query language. And it's a nice API specification. It was developed internally by Facebook in 2012, and then was made public in 2015. And I think it's now like its own independent company that does a bunch of stuff. Um, so. 
a GraphQL demo. Please ask me questions during this because I, I've, I've, I honestly hadn't worked much with uh, GraphQL before and, and the online resources for it were just confusing and I, I just don't, it, yeah, confusing at best. Um, so feel free to call out if you have any questions. So um, the first one I'll do is um, a create a brewery. So the URL is basically just saying board to GraphQL. There's no <coughs> URL things. You can modify the URL, but let's not worry about that. Um, the, the, the body is, is, is basically where it's all at. So in this situation, you're, you're, gonna mute, you're making a mutation. So either you're updating or creating something. In this situation, um, I'm gonna create a brewery. And the attributes, excuse me, um, to the um, attributes of this brewery are travel experience code, the name, and the location is here. Um, and when that, it's probably better if I do this. Um, and when that uh, that gets that uh, brewery gets created, what I want in the response is these attributes of that brewery. So in this situation, I'll do that. It comes back, and obviously this isn't JSON. Um, <coughs> it, Behind the scenes, it is JSON, but don't worry about that. You, you, there are lots of tools that change it. Um, so when it comes back, it is JSON. In this situation, I think you guys can see what it looks like. So the next one is creating a beer. I'm making the API IPA. IPA. I'm linking it to brewery one that's already been created. Um, if I want to get a get beer, get a specific beer. So in this situation, I'm searching for beer two, beer with ID two. And when I get this returned to me, I want the attributes ID, name, style. And given a beer is related to a brewery, this is basically how you would want to fetch that brewery on this resource. So I'm wanting that brewery and I'm wanting the name of that brewery by this beer. Um, it's basically the same as the include on JSON API. And that's what it looks like. <coughs> so next one, get breweries. Um, same thing, nothing special about that one. Um, yeah, I, I have a question. Yeah, um, when we did the create beer, we basically gave it gave it the ID of the brewery, which was one, which is the brewery that we created. Yeah, would it be possible for me to do a get breweries and inject that in there rather than give a hard coded ID one? If I don't create brewery, um, so when, I, when I'm creating the beer, to have the relationship with the brewery be a get. I, I get, so like you're fetching it and then you're attaching it to it. Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. Possibly. That, that's one of my main kind of problems with GraphQL, which I'll get to, is, is it's, it leaves this ambi ambiguity about what you can do and what you can't do, but I'll talk about that um, later. So this is, I thought you were asking, can you um, create a resource um, with a resource also inside of it, so creating them both at the same time. So. The next cool thing, which is, uh, is one of the main benefits, I think, of GraphQL, is the recursive querying. So, say you wanted to, um, you had a beer, and you wanted to know the, the beers that the same brewery made. Um, in JSON API, you'd probably do an include, and then you get the brewery, and then you get the brewery, and then you include all the beers. With GraphQL, um, it's all in one query, um, and you basically, in this situation, I'm saying, Beer ID, beer number two, brewery, um, give me the name of the brewery, and the breweries, the beers of that brewery, um, give me the ID and the name. So the the brewery of Beery Mick Beer beer is uh, <laughs> Travel X Beer and Co. Um, and the two beers they make are Beery Mick Beer Beer and API IPA. Um, you got a question? A question? Yeah. Uh, the payloads that you're sending these GraphQL payloads, is there a JSON copy, regular JSON component? Oh, I, like as in what does it look like in JSON? Can you, could you, send, could you send the same, uh, a regular JSON with the same uh, I What it looks like behind the scenes is basically, um, it's, it is JSON, what, it's what Postman's actually sending. Oh, wow. it, it's, um, it's just because it's using a special uh, converter, so I don't have to do like the, what does the body look like? It, it's basically saying, here's, a, here's the query in JSON. It, it's it basically this, but the, the, an attribute is, the, the value of the attribute query is that. If you, you, know do, you can look at it in the raw form? Um, you can, does it convert it? Or that? Or, no. Uh, no. Anyway, uh, uh, anyway, yes you can, is the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, that's the GraphQL demo. Um, the next thing I'm going to get into is uh, GraphQL is edges and connections. So um, it's the equivalent of a relationship in JSON API, much like that was when you did the include um, or how you saw the recursive one where you included the beer, the brewery, sorry. But uh, edges and connections, it'll make sense hopefully once I get to the next slide. So in this situation, um, pubs and beers are nodes. Um, pubs stock specific beers. Um, and this is an edge, equivalent of JSON API, I think. Um, and connection is basically a name that defines um, the schema for cursor-based page, uh, page pagination model. So it's, a, uh, it's, it's slightly confusing and it's ugly when you first see it. But just think of this as if you want to have a um, relationship um, with a resource and it's got many, 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 uh, uh, many things it is related to. So say you've got a thousand views by a brewery. You want to page those relationships when querying it and that's the main benefit. So you don't want to do include beers and it comes back at a thousand. You want the first 50, say. Um, and that's all the connections. Um, so uh, in this situation, we've got, um, like I said, solves it. another benefit that it solves um, is basically, so say, you've got, um, so say you've got a pub and you want to know uh, how long it's stopped this specific beer from, where does that attribute sit? It doesn't sit on the beer, it doesn't sit on the, on the, on the pub, it sits on this thing in between. So connections solve that problem. So in this situation, you've got a pub connection, you're saying an edge, so that's basically like the, 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 the resource that defines that, that relationship. And one of the attributes of that is stock sense. Um, and then a node, um, there's always a, um, another side of the connection, which is basically in this situation, the node is the beer to this connection. Um, and you're saying of those um, of of that node, I want the attributes ID and node and ID and name. So, um, what does this look like? Is a request uh, like this? I should say uh, I want pub one to five, the name of it, and then I want to know when it's been stopped, the like how long be each beer has been stopped. <coughs> That's what it looks like as a as a response, where it's got the edges because it could be many, um, and then the node specifically the beer. ID, ID one two three four and the name of the beer. So um, that is that's GraphQL. Hopefully that made some sense. Um, one of the options that we've got in Java to implement GraphQL APIs, um, you've got a few. Um, one is GraphQL Java, which is basically an engine for handling um, GraphQL queries. It's kind of complex, um, and they say on their website, like this, the creators basically say. You don't need an abstraction over this, don't worry, but cool bullshit. Um, uh, this one is exactly that, it's an abstraction over that. Um, and I'm going to demo that one. Another option, which JSON API is also supported for JSON API, is a lead. Um, I tried setting it up, it was too much effort, so I didn't. Um, uh, so I'm going to demo uh, GraphQL Java tools. So, just one thing, right? In terms of vacuum database, like yes. It's the expectation that you're going to work on a graph database like you know, Because if you think about unstructured queries and suddenly you think about indexes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So like ideally you would have that, but it doesn't have to be, basically. Um, it, it, you'll see it'll make sense kind of when I get to this. So um, yeah, so basically with, with GraphQL with GraphQL Java tools, um, you have to, it doesn't implement much code compared to what I showed you in Cronk. You've basically got to implement most of it, but it does kind of just like put a nice. It just. I'll, I'll explain. I'll show you actually what the code is. Um, so, uh, this is it. Firstly, uh, GraphQL is very, very. You, you need a schema. This is basically defining kind of the, the types that you've got and also the, the, the queries and the, and the mutations that you need. So, in this situation, you've got. Well, in this situation, you've got an, an ingredient, you've got a brewery, these are the types on it. Um, there's a query where you provide an ID and it comes back with a beer. Um, and this is a, an array of beers, um, creating a brewery with these attributes. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so firstly, all you need to do is have this, which defines um, all the schema. Um, obviously add the dependencies. Um, and then what, uh, is, what happens is uh, the framework searches for methods that implement those those uh, mutations and queries, and it'll basically link it behind the scenes magic um, that to to these specific methods. 
So in this situation, I've implemented um, the GraphQL mutation resolver, and it's going to say, for a mutation, find the method called create beer with these attributes and link all together. Um, and like I was kind of explaining, is there's not much code written for you. Underneath here, I am doing the usual service, then repository, and it's up to you what it looks like underneath. The, underneath. Um, so obviously, you have a repository. OK. Um, and then for beer query, same thing, it links that schema to a specific method because it's a GraphQL, Graph, GraphQL query resolver. Um, so, by the way, this was a plain spring boot app, nothing, nothing fancy. Um, yeah. So, this is, um, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Um, so, are there any questions about that quickly? So, you know, basically, yeah, it's right in there. Slacker, document so that other people can see what they're working with, methods, other methods. Uh, is there a similar thing for GraphQL? So I'm, not, people know? I'm not, well, your schema is that, basically. So you share this, so let's say you have a third party, you share this code to your class or whatever. Yeah, that's debatable. Um, but yeah, that's what the scheme is meant to be. You can even fetch it. I don't know what the URL is, but you can fetch what the scheme looks like. Um, that's probably something that I don't mention in the. Um, Crazy has got his hand up. But, um, I don't, I'm not going to mention the, uh, the comparison, but uh, graph, uh, prompt at the moment doesn't support swag, which is a bit of a crappy thing, but Elite does, actually. Um, so I'm going to quickly compare um, the two. Hopefully, I haven't gone over time too much. Um, so for overfetching and underfetching, um, everyone, so I, I kind of feel this is a bit of a tie, um, apart from the recursive querying. Um, with with uh, Crunk or with JSON API, you can, if you don't want all the attributes, you can say, I only want this specific field. And for, for underfetching, you can do includes of those resources. You just can't do recursive ones, if that makes sense. Um, relationships with attributes, this is the main reason why, I, like my main problem with JSON API, not to say that they can't implement it eventually, but GraphQL has it now. Is, is the fact that you have attributes on those relationships. You can't do that with uh, JSON API, and they basically suggest create another resource called like um, uh, uh, pub stock, which would kind of be related to a beer. And it's just like, I don't know, want to. That's a lot of that. Um, so yeah, that's why I think uh, GraphQL wins for that one. Again, graph for recursive querying, uh, GraphQL wins because you just can't do it. Again, not to say you can't eventually, but at the moment, it doesn't do it. Um, pagination, I know I didn't really go into too much detail. Um, both are pretty much the same, nothing fancy except uh, <coughs> GraphQL does cursor-based pagination, which again, nothing fancy. So something I, that's something I kind of missed um, back here with, with errors. Um, if you, so in this situation, I'm gonna create a beer and I'm gonna link it to a brewery that doesn't exist. Um, it comes back with the data, um, it, it comes back with 200, um, it, it, it comes up with 200, and also comes back with the data, um, and also the errors. So it kind of leaves you in a possible situation where you've been partially successful, which I understand the benefit for um, uh, query. So um, uh, an example of where it's useful is say you had recursive querying and you um, didn't want to fetch, there was some system that was out that you requested it and it could only fetch part of it, then it could come back and come back with an error saying we couldn't fetch direct details. But that's why I think um, JSON API, at least it handles errors, it's always black and white, it's you failed or you didn't, not this kind of in between. So, my last one, um, I think that was the end. What did I say? Uh, oh, the specification, <laughs> fundamental part of the talk. Um, JSON API is so much more specific. Um, and GraphQL has no convention at the moment for kind of what querying looks like. So how do you how do you request something like this value? So if I want to say um, a value greater than two for the ID or something like that, it doesn't really say how that should look as a query. Um, nor does it do that for how you want to mutate things. Um, and the easiest one to use is JSON API because it, um, it as soon as you understand how JSON API works, you know how to use my API. API. I keep saying IPA API. Um, once you know how it, JSON API works, you know how it's going to work. Um, all you need to then know is how the resources are linked together, and then you can just know how to use it. Um, yeah. So yeah, last slide. Um, 
I started off this thing not knowing that much about GraphQL, and I really wanted to not like it. Um, but it was actually like there was a lot of features that I really, really liked. Not to say that it's ready and it's you know perfect, but no specification is perfect. But it's it's really good. And there's a few features that I that I haven't shown that I really, really like, especially for um, more you know front end you know filling filling the page with information opposed to you know back end kind of tools. Um, but JSON API, I swear, is easy to understand. Query uh, GraphQL is quite confusing, I think. Um, yeah, that's uh, all I have to talk about. Do you guys have any questions? <laughs>